Welcome to all religions and all the Quran mentioned, such as the revolutions, the Bible, and the Holy Quran, above all, and in accordance with YouTube policies. After subscribing, press the bell. We are pleased with your comments. The story of Moses, peace be upon him, is brief. The birth and upbringing of Moses, peace be upon him. During the time of Moses, Pharaoh had issued a decision to kill any male child born to the children of Israel. This was because of a vision of their king that reported the coming of a boy from the children of Israel who would destroy the kingdom of Pharaoh. Pharaoh took caution, and because the children of Israel were servants of the Pharaohs, he ordered that the boys be killed year after year. The birth of Moses, peace be upon him, coincided with the year in which the boys of the children of Israel were to be killed, Israel. When Moses' mother gave birth to her boy, God inspired her to put Moses in a coffin and meet him in the sea, to hide it from the oppression of Pharaoh, and by God's will, the coffin moved towards Pharaoh's palace, and when it arrived, the palace's maids picked it up, so they took what was in the coffin to a seer, Pharaoh's wife. And when Pharaoh's wife opened the coffin, she found in it a child whose face was filled with light. God Almighty said, And we revealed to the mother of Moses, let me breastfeed him. Then, if you fear for him, throw him into the sea, and do not be afraid, and do not grieve. Indeed, they will return him to you, and make him one of the messengers. So, when they intended to kill Pharaoh, the child Moses, peace be upon him, his wife asked him not to kill him and to leave him to her, as he was lost. She was satisfied with him as her son, so he agreed to her request. God Almighty said, and Pharaoh's wife said, He is the comfort of an eye for me and for you. Kill him not. Perhaps he will benefit us, or we will take him as a son while they are not aware. With Pharaoh's agreement to his wife's request, he had agreed to his destruction. So he planned, God, the Almighty, is the one who will destroy him as a result of his aggression and injustice against the children of Israel. It can be summarized from the above that the birth of Moses was predicted by the pharaohs of Egypt through a vision that their king had seen, and based on it, a decision was issued to kill the male children of the children of Israel. But God saved Moses from that and satisfied him. Pharaoh's wife gave her a son, the departure of Moses, peace be upon him, from Egypt. One day, Moses, peace be upon him, was wandering around the outskirts of the city in the evening, and he found two men fighting. One of them was from his. He admonished him for bringing evil by quarreling with those whom he had no power over. Then the copt told Moses not to bother to help, lest he be killed as the copt was killed yesterday, God Almighty said, and he became in the city fearful and waiting, and behold, he who had sought help from him the day before was crying out, Moses said to him, you are a clear linguist. When he wanted to attack the one who was their enemy, he said, O oh Moses, do you want to kill me as you killed a soul yesterday? If you want to be see righteous in the land, and you do not want to be among the reformers. After Pharaoh's entourage decided to kill Moses, upon him peace be upon him, as a reward for his killing of the copt, the believer of Pharaoh's family came, and it was said that he was Pharaoh's cousin to inform Moses, peace be upon him, of what the people had decided, advising him to leave the city as soon as possible. Indeed, he followed the man's advice, and headed towards the east, towards Midian. When he had heard about Midian, the people of Midian are good, God Almighty said, And a man came running from the farthest part of the city and said, O oh Moses, the chiefs are conspiring against you to kill you, so go out. Indeed, I am of those who advise you. So he left thereafter, fearful and waiting, he said, My Lord, 
save me from the wrongdoing people. And as soon as he arrived, he married a girl, the daughter of a righteous man in Midian, and remained in his service for ten years. It can be summarized from the above that Moses, peace be upon him, grew up in Pharaoh's palace then. Moses left Egypt on the run after he unintentionally killed the copt and Pharaoh's people unanimously agreed on his punishment. So Moses, peace be upon him, headed towards Midian, assigning Moses, peace be upon him, to preach after Moses, peace be upon him, had spent a period of time in Midian. He then asked his father-in-law for permission to return to Egypt after he had completed the period of work for him to visit his family and relatives and take his wife and sheep. On his way to Egypt, he saw a burning fire. So he spared his wife and sheep and went to reassure himself of the fire that he saw so that he might take a torch from the fire to light their way back. God Almighty said, and when Moses had fulfilled the appointed time and was leading his family, he saw a fire from the side of the mountain. He said to its people, stay still. I have seen fire. Perhaps I... The mission of advocacy was assigned to him. He went to hell to guide the way to Egypt, and as soon as he arrived, God Almighty helped him guide humanity and supported him with some miracles, to be of assistance to him in making people believe him in his call for monotheism and belief in the last day, including the miracle of transforming a stick into a snake that runs and placing his hand under his armpit and it came out bright white. So Moses then began to strive in his calling with which God Almighty chose him and assigned him. It can be summarized from what was mentioned above that Moses, peace be upon him, was inspired by God Almighty as he was returning from Midian towards Egypt while he was going to the light that he saw on the side of the mount. Moses, peace be upon him, with Pharaoh and his magicians. Moses' call to Pharaoh and filling him. Moses, peace be upon him, went to Pharaoh to call him to pure monotheism and to take the reins of the children of Israel from Pharaoh's torture of them, asking God Almighty to have his brother Aaron, peace be upon him, accompany him to help him in the missions of the call. And conveying, God Almighty said, my Lord, expand my breast for me and make my affairs easy for me and loose the knot from my tongue so that they may understand my speech and appoint for me a minister from among my family, Aaron, my brother, protect my burden with it. Pharaoh had exceeded his limit in disbelief, so he claimed divinity, was known for his cruelty and was hostile to the truth and its followers. God Almighty said, and Pharaoh said, O oh, eminent ones, I have not known that you have any God other than me. And Moses and Aaron began to invite Pharaoh and his entourage to worship God Almighty. He asked him to leave the affairs of the children of Israel, to return them to the doctrine of pure monotheism, and to return them to the Holy Land. And they told him that they had miracles from God Almighty that supported their sincerity in their call to God Almighty seeking leniency and gentleness in their speech to Pharaoh. Moses showed him miracles that supported them, so he accused him of magic and sorcery. And after Moses argued with God, the Almighty, and about the previous peoples, and after he established the argument against Pharaoh, the Egyptians asked that he confront Moses, peace be upon him, with magic, because they thought that what he did was considered magic, nullifying the magic of Pharaoh. It can be summarized from the above. After Moses was entrusted with the call, he went to Pharaoh to call on him to unite God Almighty, to break the captivity of the children of Israel and to allow them to leave Egypt. And God Almighty supported him with miracles that supported his call. The exodus of Moses, peace be upon him, with the children of Israel from Egypt, the exodus from Egypt. The revelation came from God Almighty to Moses, peace be upon him, so that he would go out and take the children of Israel with him at night. He asked Pharaoh to allow the children of Israel to leave, and he agreed to his request because of his desire to get rid of Moses. 
so that most people would not believe in Moses' call, as happened with the magicians, but Pharaoh reconsidered the exodus of the children of Israel, and he would not find anyone to serve him after them. Perhaps they went out and returned to Egypt with a stronger army to deliver Moses' call, but God revealed to them matters that distracted them from following in the beginning. With Moses and those with him, and indeed Moses and those with him, left safely until the time of sunrise came, and the people of Egypt were alerted to the exit of Moses and the children of Israel. Pharaoh and his soldiers caught up with Moses. Pharaoh gathered his crowd and organized his army to catch up with Moses. Peace be upon him and the children of Israel, and they prepared with a large crowd that doubled their numbers. Who was with Moses? Peace be upon him. And they joined them at sunrise, leaving behind them the bounties and eyes of Egypt. And as soon as the two groups met, the children of Israel felt that they would inevitably be arrested. So Moses reassured them that God would save him and those with him. And indeed, divine victory came. So God Almighty commanded Moses, peace be upon him, to strike the sea with his staff, and the miracle happened. The sea parted, and the children of Israel passed through the road, and they escaped to the other bank. As soon as Pharaoh and those with him arrived, the sea closed over them, so Pharaoh and those with him drowned, and he tried to proclaim his faith. At the moment when the servant's faith is of no use, if he has not believed before. It can be summarized from the above. God Almighty supported his prophet and the believers with him by saving them from the oppression of Pharaoh. As soon as the unbelievers pursued them, the miracle of the sea splitting occurred. As soon as Moses went to meet God, the Almighty, in Mount Sinai, and Aaron had been appointed over them, they took advantage of the situation, so they took their ornaments and shaped them into the shape of a calf and worshipped him. Aaron, peace be upon him, tried to stop them from doing so, but they refused to do so and considered him weak. Then they regretted that and asked God Almighty to forgive them. The story of Moses, peace be upon him, with al -Kida. Moses, peace be upon him, went to the righteous man al kidah seeking him to teach him wisdom and guidance, and told him that God Almighty had. He sent him to him to learn from him, and God, glory be to him, had taught al kidah the knowledge of the unseen, and Moses' knowledge was concerned with the apparent, so he wanted to learn from him. al kidah replied to him that he would not be able to bear what he had of the knowledge of the unseen, since what he would see from al kidah he would not know. He drew wisdom from his behavior towards him, so Moses insisted on learning from him. So they began their journey by learning, so they boarded a ship. So the righteous servant took off a piece of wood from the ship, and Moses denounced that. So al kidah denounced his lack of patience. So Moses apologized for that. Until they encountered a second situation, he stood up. al kidah killed a boy. Musa denounced that and quickly apologized for his impatience. As soon as the third situation occurred, Musa denounced the good man helping the people of a village who had refused to help them while they were strangers cut off from their families and their country until al kidah explained to Musa the reason behind every behavior. He did it, God Almighty said. He said, this is a separation between me and you. I will inform you of the interpretation of what you could not be patient with. Thank you. If you enjoy your comments, we will be happy.